We'll talk more about that when we get to our main event with Kasim Uma and Cornelius Bundridge. Right now, though, Brian Kenny Teddy Atlas ringside, and we get ready for unbeaten lightweights head to head Henry Lundy and Darnell Giles. They'll fight four rounds. Lundy is 24 years old. He's 10 0 with six knockouts from Philadelphia, 5'6. Good amateur background, 2006 Golden Glove silver medalist. Man, he's fighting though has an incredible amateur background. Darnell Giles, 19 years old, and you see there, I, I thought Mike Jones was a tall welterweight. Here's this kid, five foot eleven, at 137 pounds. He is 8-0 with three knockouts. Amateur record, 156 and nine. Teddy. Well, first of all, the size that you just touched on, Brian, of Giles, added with his age, 19, he's got a couple more years to still grow and fill out. He's going to have options, as we talked about with Mike Jones, to fight in a lot of different weight divisions. Two southpaws head-to-head. -head. Lundy in the black against Giles in the blue, and already Lundy was staggered. They both almost had simultaneous shots land. Well, I would have to favor Giles. I'll tell you why. Not just because of his amateur background. Anytime you see a young man, a fighter, turn pro at 19, you Watch know that his Watch people have great confidence in him. He moves his head nicely, and you see these guys are bringing it right away. Around one, unbeaten lightweights, two young guys, and they don't think they should be losing tonight, Teddy. No, they don't. And right now, Lundy, the stockier, thicker bone. You can see the body more physical body on Lundy. You would think that would serve him where he just went, downstairs and in close. Giles, you would think with those long arms, that wingspan, he's gonna wanna do his damage on the outside. This is Giles' home turf. He's from Rochester, New York. He's got a bad habit, Giles. What's that? He's got quick hands, and you can see he sees things pretty well in that ring because he had that amateur background, but he pulls back with his hands down. Mm. Bad habit. Just did it there and he got caught by Lundy. He is quick though, and he snaps back Lundy's head. He is quick, good vision, good head movement too. Again, you see a guy like Giles, tall and wiry, you say, well, that's great when he's outside, but when he's inside, there's a wiry, lean body to attack. And I think that's what Lundy would be well served to concentrate on, that lean body of Giles. Big left hand comes in by Giles. And now Lundy switches up, and he'll fight Orthodox. Let's see how this works. This is pretty good stuff already, Teddy, I gotta tell you. Yes, it is, and again, I favor Giles in a tough competitive fight and the only reason i did it believe it or not is he's five years the younger so he's lundy has the maturity advantage but when you turn someone pro at 19 that tells me that his connections have great confidence in his ability won national titles as an amateur fighter in four different divisions from 125 pounds to 141 a bronze medalist at the pan am games last year you know i'm talking about giles being 19 the one thing I should correct myself with is he turned pro when he was 18. All those amateur fights started boxing at age six. His father is in his corner, so he's been boxing his whole life. Lundy has been boxing since age 18, a football player in high school. This was a very good first round. Darnell Giles, Henry Lundy were through one, and it was a beaut. New York, the Seneca Allegheny Casino and Hotel. This was a very good first round. Two unbeaten lightweights. It's Darnell Giles, 19 years old, facing Henry Lundy, 24 years old, both undefeated. Both bringing the heat in round one. Lundy outlanding Giles nearly two to one in that first round, Teddy. Sometimes the numbers surprise you a bit. I knew he landed some shots, but not two to one, 30 to 14 to be precise. Well, again, it's not just the amount of punches, it's the effect of punches. And beginning the round, Giles may have had the most effective punch of the round, a straight left hand. You, met, you had a word before as a straight left hand comes in and nails Lundy. You said explosive when you were describing Mike Jones. Some guys are more, some guys are more muscular, but other guys are more explosive. Giles is a more explosive puncher. And again, Lundy, well, 
he needs close quarters to be effective because he is thicker, a little bit more physical. He wants to be close. Charles does it. And you can see the ability to adjust and to adapt by Lundy came out as a southpaw. This round comes out as an orthodox fighter. So he's trying to change things around, trying to confuse the 19-year-old Giles. Now he's back to southpaw Lundy. The main event's still to come, and it's up next. Kasim Uma versus K-9, Cornelius Bundridge. We expect that to be an outstanding fight. Good volume puncher in Uma, former world titleist, against a very sturdy K-9 Bundridge. Guy with a big right hand. Talking about big right hands, there's a long left hand by Giles, the southpaw in the blue, using that height the way he should. Not many lightweights this size. I, you know, I don't know if he can stay in this weight class as he as he gets a little older. But you know, Chico Corrales, Diego Corrales, the late great lightweight champion, was six feet tall in this weight class. Not many guys up that big. Yeah, there's a good bed right here. Charles just gave up his height, so that's a bed. He's given up his height. He's in close where Lundy wants him to be. Furious exchange right now. Giles trying to throw combinations, but Lundy has a lot of strength and a lot of sting on those punches. Again, Giles giving up his height. Good uppercut by Lundy. And now he goes to the body as he spins him around and puts him on the ropes. Giles is going to have to learn what he is. He's a tall, long fighter, and he's going to have to learn to stand on the areas that are going to serve him with those assets. Not on the inside. Now, the good news about it, Brian, is Giles, even though he's inside where I don't think he should be, with the stronger Lundy, or at least the more physical Lundy, he shows you for a guy with long arms, he knows how to work inside. Not all long arm fighters know how to work on the inside. Hey, that's why Riddick Bow won the title against Holyfield. He was able to work on the inside when Holyfield didn't think he would be. Vicious hook by Henry Lundy after a beautiful combination by Giles. What an outstanding fight. They'll only fight four. Maybe it's best that way. Great matchup here. Unbeaten lightweights just south of Buffalo. Brian Kenny and Teddy Atlas here ringside. We're joined by, at one point, best lightweight in the world, former lightweight champion Paul Spatterfora. Hey, Paul, good to see you. Nice to see you, too. How are you doing? Uh, we're doing well. So you're getting back. Again, you've been away a long time. You've been in prison. You're back out. You're looking to get back into the game. What's going on with your career? Um, I'm getting ready to fight on uh, April 6th afternoon up in, up in Erie. I'm excited. I can't wait to get back out there. How do you feel? I mean, physically, after all you've been through, you're 32 now. How do you feel? Physically, I feel great. I've been working real, real hard. Matter of fact, I've been sparring with this young kid, um, Darnell Giles. He's really, really a good fighter. You've been in with this guy, right? Yeah, he's, okay. a, he's a good fighter, up-and-coming fighter, and uh, I've been doing my thing, you know, trying to just take it one day at a time. Paul, you had two and a half years off. You fought once in 2006, once in 2007. You're fighting next week. You're always a slick fighter, the southpaw, just like the guy we're watching, and a guy who knew how to fight. He knew the ins and outs in there. Have you changed? What do we expect from? Is there a new Paul Spatterfall? Well, I think that um, I, I, I'm just more relaxed. You know what I mean? And uh, I think that I'm more more confident and I'm all coming off more coming off the ankles a lot better. Paul was always good with the angles. You, you were one of the best out there. Giles goes back. We'll see if he twists his ankle as he went off the side of the ring apron. Paul, stay with us here. Again, you've been in with uh, been in with the best, and you've been in the ring sparring with Darnell Giles. Tell us about Giles and what you've seen so far in this fight. Well, I like to see him use his jab. He, he don't need to make a fight out of this. I think he'd do, he'd do a lot better if he just uses his jab and uh, box him from the outside. But he's game. This kid likes to fight. Ian and Jimmy's the same way. This kid can really fight. he got a lot of pride, and, that, and that's what's making a fight out of it. But if he uses his jab and boxes, I see him out beating this dude. In other words, what you're saying, Paul, He's got to learn what his ring identity is. Exactly. Use his jab and, and win his fight easy because he can make it easy. He does give up that height every once in a while, and I know that the shorter Lundy loves to see that. And you said that's a characteristic of Giles because sometimes he wants to fight a little too much. Fighters have to learn to control that. You love the spirit, but they do have to learn to tamper that, don't they? No question about it. I mean, this, that's, that, that can make him great, and that could be his downfall. Well put. 
This is a good matchup here. Good analysis, Paul, because that Lundy, you can tell, lo loves to mix it up. You know, he's a strong guy. He starts smiling when he starts trading. But it's got to be tough because Giles throws such good, wicked combinations. You know, he's intoxicated by his by his own talent when he starts getting in close. Exactly. He's, and, and this kid, this this kid, uh, Lundy, that's that's the only time he's getting off is when he's when when he makes a fight out of it. If, if Giles uses his jab and boxes, then he makes it an easier fight. That's what I see. You know, Paul, you're southpaw, and you have that advantage most of the time when you get in the ring. You have an orthodox fighter. You know that they haven't seen lefties, and you take advantage of that. What happens when you as a southpaw get in the ring like these two fighters and you got another southpaw in front of you? What happens mentally? What it, oh, does that change things for you? I think I think it um it definitely changes things, but it brings it it, it makes you be more fundamentally sound. You got to know the punches are coming from a different angles because you're so, you're so used to seeing right-handed fighters. Well, now you're fighting a guy who's both southpaws. You got to be more fundamentally sound. Hey Paul, good breakdown. Again, best of luck in your comeback. You're fighting when? April 6th, you said? April 6th. In Erie. In, in Erie, yeah. Good luck, Paul. It's good to have you back. Paul. And uh, we always appreciate it watching you in that ring. You're a real slick guy that respects the sweet science inside that squared ring. Thanks a lot, Ted. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for dropping by. Paul Spatter Fora, former lightweight champion. We've got one more round after this. Again, a crisp three rounds so far. Darnell Giles and Henry Lundy. Right, 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 right. The right. Final seconds of round three. They've got one more round, and both want it. We haven't had a bad round yet, Teddy. I tell you what, Darnell Giles, Henry Lundy, this is the final round. Tough rounds to score. Now, and you know, you just touched on something, that I got to say something. You're right. We haven't had a bad round, and for the most part, all night we haven't had a bad round. A lot of that has to do with matchmaking and who the promoter is. In this case, Russell Peltz, a Hall of Fame promoter, and one of the things that I don't think it's an accident, a lot of times we get fights that are coming in on last minute notice, last day, last two days, and you know, you never know what you're gonna get. But no replacements at the last second in this card, and a lot of it to do with the promoter we're dealing with, and of course, the matchmaker. Giles opens up there, swapping Watch leather right now. You can Watch hear it, you can feel it. We had Jermaine Sanders, the veteran, against a young 12-0 kid, Mike Jones. That was an outstanding fight. This has been a scintillating matchup between unbeaten lightweights. Again, Lundy is 24 years old. Not like he's the old guy in here, but he is compared to the 19-year-old Darnell Giles with the incredible amateur record. Both and remember, with amateur backgrounds. Both these fighters had not been tested in their young careers. They've both been in fairly soft. Big step up for both fighters tonight. Big left hand just got over the top on Lundy. Didn't hurt him. But again, there, there's velocity on those Giles shots. And there's more of a heavy thud to the Lundy shots. Punch tracks, by the way, it's, it's about even so far. It's 77 to 75. Giles, if you're looking at the punch track, and look, you know, that, that's even. That's margin of error right there, Teddy. So what do you like? Tough rounds to score, and only four rounds to score. I'm looking to see who's better in the places they should be better. What I mean by that is who controls the geography that they need to control. Giles should be controlling it on the outside with that long jab, Brian. Lundy should be inside. His geography should be up tight and going to that body. Who's more consistent in those areas? Giles coming in here unbeaten. Again, he's only 19. He's a short drive away in Rochester, New York. Looking to build up that record, but matched very competitively here against Henry Lundy. As long as you see separation, you know Giles is doing pretty good. Right there, he makes some punches, miss, and he comes back with those quick hands. Let's see what happens here in the final 30 seconds. The opening 30 seconds was incredible. Let's see if they can finish strong. I'm seeing more options and more versatility throughout the night for Giles. He can fight inside even when he shouldn't, when he gives up that height. Obviously, he can fight on the outside, and he can move a little bit. For the most part, Lundy is straight ahead, doing most of his work right there in the pocket. Lundy with some clean headshots off that left hand. Now they trade in the final seconds. Both young guys going after it. That'll do it. Four excellent rounds between Darnell Giles and Henry Lundy. And oh, might go. We've got the decision after this.
back here on Friday Night Fights. Brian Kenny, Teddy Atlas. Take a look at the total punches. Again, margin of error. Uh, that's about even. Lundy actually throwing more punches, credited with throwing more punches at the very least. We took it. Teddy's scorecard. You know, Teddy, I mentioned that an O might go. You know, sometimes a round doesn't have a definitive conclusion. You do your best to score it. It's very difficult. That's why they allow even rounds. And you snuck one in there. I sure did, Let's Brian. Let's see if we have one. This was an outstanding fight. Darnell Giles, Henry Lundy. Let's get the decision right now. Here's Mike Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges, Julie Letterman, Steve Weisfeld, and Don Ackerman, all scored about exactly the same. They see the bout at 38 to 38. The fight is judged a draw. Now you see, there's no reason to boo it. You want a winner, but in fact, who do you want as a loser in that fight? You know, you got four rounds. That's that's easily a draw. It, it could go either way, Teddy. That, no, and it doesn't hurt either fighter. And you have to appreciate that they took a risk of fighting yep. each other at yep. this point in their careers. They get a chance to develop right, from the fight and come back better. I like that decision. I like both of these fighters.